for them here in the bronze medal game. Well, all the teams who make the men's national championship tournament are quality teams, but in the four games, the four teams are about to see in the two medal games, not totally the teams that were expected to be playing for medals when this tournament began. No, not necessarily. There's been a lot of close games and some upsets as well in this tournament. VIU in particular, who we will see in the gold medal game at 7.30, has staged comebacks from down double digits in each of their games to go on and win and earn their place in the gold medal final. And I think a lot of that you have to chalk up to the crowd support they've had, the traveling fans from Vancouver Island making the trip over to Langley and giving their team a big boost. But it do, I don't think it comes as any surprise that some of the top seeds have been knocked out because there's so much talent on every roster here at the tournament. Montmorency, again, they lost to one of the finalists, Sheridan in the first round, but they also feature one of the best players in the tournament, number 22, Ely Corojo, who can really do it all on the basketball court, and he's going to be key to his team's hopes to take home third place. Well, Humber will have seen Corojo throughout this tournament. Do they have a guy on that roster who jumps to mind for you who they can put on him and guard him, or are they we're going to see something more in the junk variety? It's difficult because Corojo is six foot seven. He has a height advantage on every player on the Humber roster, but he's not your traditional post player. He can work outside, he can shoot the three, he can take you off the bounce. Also a very strong rebounder. So you might see, for example, Jalen Morgan, who's a forward for the Hawks start on Corojo, but he's more of a traditional post player, although he's also athletic. I think it's going to be more by committee and a team focus on defense to try to shut down Corojo tonight. Well, very few teams get to win on the last day of their season and even less get to win and take home a medal. Humber in the familiar navy blue, taking on Montmorency in their white with green and blue trim. Bronze medal on the line here at the Langley Event Center in beautiful spring British Columbia all of a sudden we were 15 centimeters of snow not that long ago and now all of a sudden it feels like summer out there so these two teams will try to add on to that good feeling by taking home a medal in your classic Ontario versus Quebec we, battle we shouldn't complain too strongly about the weather if we do have <laughs> spectators yes. watching from Ontario and Quebec but for us it was a difficult <laughs> winter let's put it that way 15 whole centimeters of snow out yeah. of BC minus five minus six at <laughs> some points just brutal couldn't even go outside the other thing I'm going to be watching here is the fifth year players. This is their not just the final game of the season or the tournament, the final games of their career. Two of those players on the roster for Humber. Number 11, Kerwin Elvis, and number 23, Jordan Rose. Elvis in particular is one of their key players, their key guards leading the way. We'll see what he brings and what could be the final game of his collegiate career, what will be the final game of his collegiate career. Certainly expect to see an inspired performance from those fifth-year players, as you, as you mentioned. Um, no fifth-year players on Montmorency, the way that the SAGEP system works. It is a stepping stone through to more basketball, either south of the border or sometimes at the CIS level. But uh, nonetheless, they get set as they're about to announce the starting lineups. So we'll hand it over to our PA announcer. Well, Humber starts with Mohamed, Francis, Kaskar, Elvis, and Morgan. Momorenzi counters with Shukwanyo. That's going to be a battle all night for me. <laughs> That's going to be a hard one. I've, I've, I've know the struggle. Portier, Corojo, as you had previously mentioned. 
Keita and Charles Cousin. Set to go here, seconds away from tip off. Bronze medal on the line, Ontario versus Quebec. One thing to watch right in the opening minutes here, the size advantage for the Nomads. Corojo and Cousin both listed at six foot seven. Cousin, the traditional post presence, very efficient operating near the hoop. Corojo starts at the top and dribble handoff into the hands of Fortier, swings it back around for Corojo. Thought about a pump fake at the high elbow, instead drops it off. Little dish, easy layup, and right away, drawing first blood is Charles Cousin on the very nice dish from Shukwanyo, two nothing Momo out of the gate. Great dribble penetration from Chukwango, and that's just the thing. If you pay too much attention to Corojo, there are other players on the Nomads who can hurt you from the perimeter. Cascart reverses the ball, and Humber will try it now on the left side. Turning the corner is Elvis. Swings it back around, deflected out of bounds. Six on the shot clock. It will stay Hawk ball. And for the Hawks, they're starting four guards. Morgan, the only forward of the rest of the players, all six foot one or under listed on our program. So they're going to have to use their speed, their quickness to make up for that size gap. Ball entered to Morgan now. Pull up three. It's a deep one. No good off the back rim. Rebound tapped around and then finally controlled by Corojo. Handles the ball, swings it around into the hands of Chukwanyo. Drives, left hand up. Partially tipped, knocked around. No good. Hubbard controls and here they come starting that break you had mentioned. Looking to use that speed to their advantage. Good defense from Corojo under the rim, getting position and forcing the miss. Elvis a little strong on that one. You had mentioned playing his final game. Could nerves be a factor? Well, you never know, especially because, as you said, hardware is on the line here. You want to cap off this tournament this season, and in Elvis's case, your career with a win. It could take him just a couple of minutes to really get into the flow of the game. Turn around, right-hander from Cousin. No good, bounces around, knocked out of bounds, and it will be Humber Ball. Eight and a half to go here in the first quarter. Two nothing, Momo, as they show some pressure here. Oh, pardon me, they changed the call. It's going to be white ball out of bounds. And they will have 14 on the 24 second clock. Ball swung in for Fortier. His shot is up, no good. Rebound controlled by Humber, and back they come. That was a design play to get Fortier open in the corner. He is a marksman from three point range. Couldn't connect there but he will keep firing all night. Elvis again gets into the lane but can't finish and back comes Corojo, kicks into the corner. Pump fake, tries the middle, nothing there. Good defense that time by the Hawks. Keita now hands it off for Fortier. Swings it back to Keita. Throws it in, tough pass out of the reach of Cousin and Humber will pull back the other way. Kaskar drives and commits the offensive foul as it was Chukwanyo standing in there and taking the charge. On the previous possession, the Nomads had their big man, Cousin, matched up against the much smaller Taquan Kaskar. The entry pass wasn't there, and that was partly because of the active defense from the Hawks denying it, because if Cousin gets it in the post in that situation, he's going to be extremely effective. Keita out, McFadden, Jean in for Momo, an early substitution for the Nomads. Corozo now tries the left side, comes off the high screen. Little hesitation, gives it up behind the back. He stays at the top now. A little bit of extra tension coming from Humber. Tries the right in the middle. Good defense still. Still holds on. Little lob pass into the hands of Cousin, and he can't finish inside. So both teams trouble finishing early. As you said, nerves perhaps playing a factor here in a high stakes game. Morgan backing down. Now diagonal skip, ball reversed. One more pass in the corner, trying the middle. And up with the left hand is good. First blood for Jordan Francis and the Hawks ties this game at two. Fortier now tries the baseline, nothing there. Swings it back around to Corozo. Drives left hand up to the right. No good. That one too strong. Rebound controlled by Humber, and here they go again. Strong interior defense so far from the Hawks. Despite the smaller lineup, they've been able to force some misses at the rim. Kaskart finds Mohamed, but he can't connect on the three. And more substitutions into the game. For Humber, it is Marcelin and Cy Samuels. And into the game for Momo is Cedric Colimo. So both coaches trying some new lineups here early on, see if they can get something going. Ball is inbounded for Francis. Swung back around for Mohamed. Corner, it's Morgan now. Back in for Marce Marceline. 
drives with the right hand, doesn't go, but he's fouled. That will be on the baseline as a reaching foul called on Momo. Humber bringing Cy Samuels off the bench early, going for a more traditional two big lineup. But Samuels, he's not just a post banger, he can also handle and facilitate a little bit. So still keeping some skill out there on the floor, but they do match up better with the size of the Nomads now. Luis Chile into the game for Momo. Fake handoff trying the left side that time with Samuels, nothing there. And now at the high post, jumper from the top, got it. Jalen Morgan squares up and hits the jumper. Humber takes their first lead of the game at 4-2. Back the other way comes Momo driving and fouled is Chiquano, and he'll go to the line and shoot two. Looked like strong defense there from Morgan, but I think he just got the body too much into Chokegno. That will send him to the line. First free throw is good. Cuts the lead to one. As Eli Carroso having words with head coach Mark Olivier Beauchamp. Trying to see if they come up with a way that they can get him in some space. 4-4 as the second free throw is good. A little bit of a slow start offensively for these two teams. High post entry again into the hands of Samuel. And Squares. there they go, Pass letting back. him facilitate. In, in tight was Marslane, but he couldn't finish inside. So another good job for the Hawks of getting inside, but still can't finish. This time it is Corrosion, and he's called for the dribble violation as he's carried the basketball on his way in and looks skyward in disbelief. Mohammed now handles for the Hawks. Tries the left side now. High post entry. Driving in. Swung into the corner. I believe that is three on the way. And that one is good from Jordan Francis. First made three of the game. Goes to Humber. And they are up 7-4. Drive and kick. Classic offense. Pays off there for the Hawks. Ball swung around to Chile. Swung now three on the way for Momo. It's short off the hands of Chukonwo. Rebound foul. And goes back to Humber. And that's going to go on... Kalimon, I believe that's his second personal. And that is going to bring Charles Cousin back into this game. And they had already brought Kalimon off the bench and picks up two quick fouls. So now they have to go back to Cousin. That was probably a strategic substitution early in the game. So we'll see how bringing the more traditional big man back in affects their game plan. Marceline loses it and going all the way in for the easy lay-in is Momo's number nine, Chukwonyo. Now another trap for Momo and another turnover. Chiquano again drives up to the left hand, gets it to go. So two presses, two turnovers by the Humber Hawks and all of a sudden Momo now up 8-7. Back they come, Samuels drives. Thought about a reverse, kicks it out. Just, just get it to Mohammed. One more pass to Mar Mar Marceline. 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 He can't hit the three and back comes Momo as the pace starts to quicken here in this bronze medal game. Chile wants three, no good, too strong. Rebound controlled by Humber, but thrown away, and it'll go back to Malmorenzi. And that was two turnovers by Marceline after the full court pressure from the Nomads. Marceline only played eight minutes in Humber's game this morning against Holland, and you got to figure that if he can't handle that full court pressure, they're going to have to put another ball handler in to try to relieve some of that pressure, and indeed, Marceline headed to the bench right now. Well, the first adjustment of the game comes from Momo with that pressure and it pays off. We'll see what Humber comes back with as Chile drives on the baseline. Right-handed floater, no good. Rebound tapped around, still no good. And the rebound controlled by Morgan and back comes Humber. Samuels crossover, keeps it alive. Tough right hand, beautiful bucket from Cy Samuels. The body control from the big man, you wouldn't expect it, but he's got those light feet and light hands as well. Showing his agility on that one. Almost lost it on the way up, but was able to corral it just in time to finish with the right hand and then commits the foul at the other end. Loose ball foul will not put Momo on the line. Bit of a frenetic pace early on, but maybe not the kind these coaches want. Probably not. I'm hoping, they're probably hoping that their teams will find a little poise and composure here in the final four and a half minutes of the first quarter. But the good news for the coaches is neither team has been able to gain a big advantage. We're still basically at 0-0 zero, zero here. Kevin O2 and Trayvon Mollison in for Humber as the Hawks continue to go deep to their bench early on and look to find a squad that will pay off. Ends with the right hand that time, no good, and going to the line for Momo is McFadden Jump. 
John, an extremely athletic player, but they bring off the bench. He'll play a lot of the game, kind of that classic sixth man. He had 20 points in their win this morning. As I said, very athletic. I've seen them try to hit him for lobs on the alley-oop a couple of times, and he'll use his left hand to get to the rim consistently. Portier back in the game for Momo. That was foul on Samuels, was his second, and he is not happy going to the bench. So two fouls for two of the big men on each team early on. We'll see how these coaches adjust. First free throw from Jean is no good. 9-8 early on. Humber, and up by one. Sorry, go ahead. It's interesting because both coaches made strategy adjustments bringing different big men off the bench, and then they have to immediately take those back after yeah. the bigs yeah. get in foul trouble. So we're kind of back to square one here with the initial game plan. Momo continues to show this man run and jump pressure here. He's handling the ball is Miquel Martin for Humber. Comes off the high screen. Bounce pass, beautiful pass inside, and just too strong in the layup. But finishing it is Jimmy Rich, who just checked into the game for the Hawks. Humber back up by two, back the other way. No good, but fouled, and another foul committed by Humber. And again, you saw McFadden Jean there using his speed, even off the make, getting out in transition and just going hard to the rim. He gets a lot of opportunities at the line as a result. Chiquenio back in for Momo, replacing Ely Carozo. So Carozo not able to get going early on in this game. Humber showing a little extra tension, helping on him a little quicker than perhaps some of the other Momo players. But as you had mentioned, no team is able to gain a real advantage up to this point. As Momo trails just by one with a chance to tie it here on John's second free throw. And he does just that, 11-11, four minutes to play here in the first quarter. Bronze medal game, hardware on the line for these teams. CCAA Men's National Championship from the LEC. Another high screen there. Left side this time, too strong going in for Morgan, but he is fouled and will go to the line and shoot two. Interesting look there from the Hawks using their big man Morgan to initiate the pick and roll, doing the pick and roll with Jimmy Rich as the screener. I think that's an attempt to get a non-traditional defender involved in that pick and roll, maybe someone like Cousin who's not used to being on that end of things, and it works out with Morgan headed to the line. When you have the ball handling ability that the bigs on this Humber team have, it's a nice, a nice way to be able to switch that action up. First free throw is good, Humber back on top. Thirteen eleven. Back into the game is Daquan Kaskar. And he replaces Jalen Morgan. Now it's Humber's turn to show a little bit of pressure. Up the sideline comes Chiquenio, swings it around. Tough shot that time from Gautier. Sidney Gautier into the game for Momo, and his shot is blocked out of bounds, but will stay. Nomad ball with 15 on the shot clock. Good defensive rotation from Rich coming around to swat that one out of bounds. Ball bounced into Cousin. Swings it back around to the top. Pull up jumper from about 12. Too strong. That one off the hands of Fortier. And Humber turns it back the other way. Kesskart now swings it back. Ball reversed and goes into the hands of Martin. Working one-on-one -on -one here against Fortier now. Takes him right. Spins back to his left. Kicks it. One more to the corner, good look at a three. No good, that one too short, but nice ball rotation from the Hawks on that one. Jimmy Rich, number 14 for Humber, has caught my eye here, giving them some good minutes. He's kind of the third big in this rotation, but with the first two bigs on the bench, he's got an offensive rebound for a putback. He's played some strong defense on Cousins, saw a block shot, doing a lot of little things for the Hawks in the first quarter. Well, as you had mentioned, four, fourth game in three days, we're gonna, they're gonna need every body on that bench to take home the bronze medal here. And not just the medal on the line, as you know in the CCAA, how you place determines the wild card berths for the next year for your conference. So more than just the medal on the line, the team that finishes third here will have a much better chance of getting that automatic wild card in next year's national. That's a great point because as you said, yes, there's disappointment you're not in the finals this year, but a lot of these players will be returning and they'll already be thinking about trying to take home the gold in next year's tournament. Both of these teams play in very competitive conferences, so having that cushion of another wild card is a nice thing to have. Rich wants the ball in the lob, it's not there, it gets thrown to the high post, fumbling it, but then getting it back was Martin. 
Martin gets whistled. For a dribble up by yeah, the there. double dribble there. He's saying he didn't actually catch it before it hit the ground the first time. And referee disagrees. I think he might actually have a point there, but that's why we're here and they're there. That's exactly right. Kata now swings it around to Trequeno. Three on the way from Fortier. No good. That one too strong. Back comes Humber. Nice crossover this time. In with the right hand. A little out of control that time with Mollison. Yeah, he was looking for the contact. Referee's whistle stays still. And I do think it was good positioning by the defender. What an intense physical game this has yeah. turned into. Yeah. Particularly just in the last couple minutes, I've noticed. Every drive contested, every rebound contested. Great to see from these two teams. Well, these referees don't look like they are all interested in rewarding anyone who has not earned the right to be on the free throw line. So they're going to have to work to get themselves some better looks. Ball swung around. Coming off the high post was Jean, and he enters it in into the game here. This is uh, Wemby, his first touch of the game, and he is fouled from behind. And that will send him to the line to shoot two. And Gideon Duomfor in for Momo. I think from a play-by-play -play standpoint, we have literally seen every person on this sheet. This is the play-by-play -play nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> You're absolutely right. But as you said, that's not that surprising because this is their second game today. They're going to have to get those yeah. fresh legs in, but you're exactly right. It's hard to get into the flow when they're making these quick substitutions. Well, it's certainly the high school coaches that are watching this broadcast envious of the depth that the post-secondary teams have. As you know, at this level, all 12 guys can play. It's just a matter of how they fit in the system. So good chance for some of the players that you mentioned, like a Jimmy Rich, to get some real extended minutes and show his quality to the coaching staff. Absolutely. This is Morgan now. He handles Tries middle, runs out of room, but he is fouled and reached in that time. That was Wemby. And Just you see the fourth foul, yeah. with Morgan on the floor and four guards surrounding him, but he can handle, he can drive from the perimeter, so it's really like five perimeter players, and that puts some of the bigs for the Nomads in an uncomfortable position for defending sure. on, the, on the arc. As evidenced by that reach in foul on that last play. Ball tipped by Momo, 18 on the shot clock, just over two to play in the first, and stays Humber ball, so. The traditional feeling out process certainly front and center here as neither of these teams seem to have settled on a strategy for this game. Ball swung around for Martin. He gives it back to Mollison. Mollison tries the right, loses it, try to dish, and back comes Momo all the way in with the right hand. Beautiful finish from Shukwanyo. Incredible speed to race down the floor there and take it right to the hoop strong. Ball swung, pump fake. Pass underneath, good pass, fumbled, but caught back by the Hawks. Now the three's on the way, that one too strong, and the rebound corralled with one hand by Corojo. We haven't seen really either team dial it in from long range yet. I think that's going to be a big factor as this game continues. Ball out of bounds, off the Hawk player. And Khalid Ismail sees his first action for Humber, so... There's the lob play, or set to be a lob, in for Corojo. Got it in a good spot, but couldn't really gather. And another turnover, more turnovers in this game than both of these coaches would like to see. There's a three on the way. This one is good off the hands of Daquan Cascart. So inside out, had a good look. Big shot for the Hawks there. Daquan Cascart, one of their key scores. They want to get him going as soon as possible. High screen now, swung back around to Corojo. He thought about a three, now puts it in the right hand, tries the baseline, runs out of room. Beautiful pass, extra pass. Now driving with the pull-up right-hander on that one was Keita, and probably not the best shot that Momo could have gone on that possession. Well, as we talked about off the top of the broadcast, it's been defense by committee on number 22, Eli Corojo on that one. He drove baseline, but the help defense came, forced the rotation. It ended up with a promising drive from Momo, but the ball was in someone else's hands, and I think that's exactly what Humber wants. They don't want Corojo to beat them. They're going to make his teammates do it. Foul at the other end is the second foul on Brandon Manya Wimby, so he will sit down with his second. Third player already to hit their second foul in this game. And Molison good on the first free throw. 17-14, the largest lead of the game for either team here, just three points. Second free throw is good. 
Under a minute to play here in the first. And it's Humber's turn to show pressure. Up the side is Chapuano. Into the hands of Keita. Shot clock did not reset there. And it's taken in by Shaquanro. Driving, dishing, beautiful pass. Right hand is good from Cousin. Just like they drew it up for the Nomads, Cousins so sure handed around the hoop and that was an easy bucket for him. Timing on that slip could not have been better. Easy dime that time for Conwell. Rebound, put back, swung around. Extra pass into the hands of Morgan. Swung around, another three is good. So back to back threes from Daquan Cascart. And the lead up to five with six seconds left. Momo will work here for the last shot. Driving in, kicking the ball, knocked around and stays Momo ball with just .5 left. Great defensive recovery to deflect that pass, otherwise it would have been two points for the Nomads. Jordan Francis checks in. Replacing Martin. <laughs> Martin giving him some yeah. play scouting for what the Nomads might plan to run here. Ball tapped away and that'll do it. So first quarter in the books. The Humber Hawks lead the Momorensi Nomads 21-16. Thoughts on the first half, Jamie? Well, as you said, I think the you called quarter. it a feeling out process, and that's exactly what it was from both teams. I don't think either coach will be thrilled or over the moon with how they've played. Having said that, some good signs on both sides as well. In particular, I think for the Hawks, getting Kaskart going a little bit towards the end there, hitting a couple of open threes will be really big for them. For the Nomads, you're already seeing that they do have an athleticism advantage, I think, in certain situations, especially with McFadden, Jean, and Blondo Chukegno going towards the rim. They've created some opportunities that way. I think they just need to establish a little bit of a rhythm and also find a way to integrate, integrate number 22, their star, Ely Corojo, into the flow of the offense. Well, we talked about depth. 22 separate players have seen the floor already in this game. So neither coach reluctant to use their bench here in this bronze medal game. And really balanced scoring, especially for the Hawks. Kaskart with six after those two three-pointers. Francis, five. Morgan, four. And then three players with two each. For Momo, it is Chukegno leading the way. As I said, he's caught my eyes with his speed and athleticism. He has eight points, two assists, three steals as well. He was the star there in the first quarter for the team from Laval. Well, first quarter stats, the Humber Hawks shooting 41% from the field, Momo shooting just 26%, probably feel relatively fortunate to be down just five. Yeah, absolutely, 0-4 from three. Uh, they've turned the ball over three times, but they forced five turnovers, so they are slightly winning that battle, but exactly right. They're being outshot quite significantly, but they're only down five. Still lots of time left in this game for them to find their rhythm. I would especially look at Forche, who's 0 of 3 right now, but he is a dead-eye shooter when he gets going, and if he heats up, they could flip this game in a hurry. Well, we get set to start the second. It will be Humber Ball to start. They lead by five here in this bronze medal game. I'm Paul Carenza alongside Jamie Dodd, bringing you both medal games here from the Langley Event Center. Up top now, it's Morgan who works from the elbow. Tries to left, spins back, turn around jumper, just off the front rim, rebound. Beautiful play to keep it alive, but then turned over and back comes Shukegno, and he will finish again. So he continues to be the hot hand. He's already in double figures. Another steal Nomad. from Shukegno, and then another fast break opportunity. And it was a pretty ball fake that time to get the defender in the air, and then go up for the easy layup. 10 points, four steals, and a couple of assists for him. He's ready to go. Tough dribble move that time from Mollison. Creates a turnover. And make that five steals for Chicago, although he did throw it away, but because of the out of bounds, they're gonna get the ball right back. Humber by three. Two turnovers to start the quarter for the Hawks. Coach Downey will not like that. Ball swung around and here is Corojo. Again, the help there quickly from Humber as they're playing 
somewhat of a traditional pack defense whenever Caroso touches and he has not been able to exploit. But the recipient of those that defense has been Chukegno as he hits a three and has 13 points already and has got this game tied up again. So 5-0 run for the Nomads to start this second quarter. And all from Chicago, 13 yep. of his team's 21, keeping them in this early. Nice drive from Kaskar. Strong take and an impressive finish there. I think for the Nomads, yes, the Hawks are playing extremely effective traditional man-to-man -man defense with the help coming on Corojo. But I think instead of having him operate on the perimeter against the smaller, quicker Humber players, they need to try to maybe work him in the post a little bit, possibly in the high post even, where he can facilitate for his teammates and try to find other ways to get him open shots. Well, I don't know if you saw that, but Kaskar just received a technical foul after his layup. I think, it I believe it was a taunting technical. Well, um, and that's his second foul. The referees have not been shy about handing out technical fouls throughout this tournament. If you were watching earlier, you saw <laughs> Coach Paul Eberhardt yeah. of the Langer Falcons get two technicals, kicked out of the game, but he did get a standing ovation from the teams <laughs> and the supporters, so that made him feel a little better about things. Well, I coached with Eberhardt for 10 years, and I can tell you that is almost as good as winning. <laughs> he is a fiery personality, no doubt about that. Ball swung around and looking for Sheila. I think he thought it was for someone else. And the ball sails out of bounds, so turnover for Momo. Miscommunication there from the Nomads. Of course, Eberhardt won this championship last time it was held here in BC up at Quest. And has done a great job with that Langara program. And the Langara program has done a great job hosting this tournament. They absolutely have. It has been a fantastic few days of basketball here at the LEC. Morgan hands it off to Elvis. Back to Morgan, spins on the baseline, up strong, loses the handle on it, and it is Chukegno that gets the ball back, and they have numbers coming back, five on four, nice pass, easy layup. Morgan hit his head hard on the court as he went down after right. that missed shot. That let Cousins streak down the lane undefended. Surprised that officials didn't stop the game for that. I sure. am surprised as well, especially after the made buckets. Yeah. Does look like Morgan will stay in the game. But he was certainly in some discomfort yeah. after that after that fall. And as you had mentioned, it looked like he did hit his head. So interesting to see if the, if the officials maybe get together on this, but it does not look like they will. They'll stay in the game. And Momo 24, Humber 23. Humber defense has done a nice job on a standout forward, Ely Corozo, but they still trail by one. Pass, drive, left hand, got it. Nice layup that time from Elvis, the fifth year player, as you mentioned, puts his Hawks back on top. Strong footwork to dance around the defender and get to the rim for the left handed finish. Well, Humber has switched here to a 2 3 zone, and we'll see if. Corojo can get a little more space here as he operates out of the high post baseline jumper. Good, that's a two from Christophe Fortier. I'm interested to see how long Humber stays in that zone because that's where Corojo has done a lot of his damage in the previous games in this tournament. They put him at the elbow and let him facilitate or drive as the situation dictates. He's extremely effective in that role. Well, he found Fortier for the long two. Another three on the way, no good. That one too strong from Chicago. Elvis now kicks it, extra pass, and Muhammad thought about a very deep three instead, tries the left side. Bounce pass back to Elvis, now a baseline jumper, too strong, rebound controlled by Momo. Almost lost by Shikegno, but he gets it back and he'll push the tempo now for the Nomad. Tries the right side for Fortier. Directing traffic, throws it in for Cousin. Swings it to Corozo. looks at a three, no good, short. Rebound, Humber, and back they come. I think for the Humber Hawks, they got to try to get some stuff going inside. Morgan settled for some jumpers on recent possessions there. That's a great take yeah. by Jordan Francis. Francis gets all the way, will not finish, but does get fouled. Will go to the line and shoot two. Timeout here called by Mel Marinci. So what is Coach Beauchamp telling his players right now? 
Well, I think he's gonna probably what they're gonna discuss is how exactly they want to attack the zone that the Hummer has just switched into, as you said, that two three zone. Mamorazzi has been able to find success about against similar defenses in this tournament, so I think you'll see a lot of that high-low action with Corojo in the elbow, the free throw line area, and then either feeding Cousin in the dead spots along the baseline in the zone or kicking out to Forche in the corner or Chicago for potentially a dribble drive opportunity. They are comfortable. They know how to do it, and it's just a question of getting the specifics right and executing for the Nomads. If your coach... Downey on the other side, what are you telling your Hawks here in this timeout? You're well, trailing by one, but you have to be pretty happy with the job you've done on some of Momo's key guys. You're doing some really good things on defense, especially when they were in that man-to-man. -man. That was really textbook man-to-man -man defense, sagging off at the right times, closing out at the right times, rotating, doing it all really, really well, and communicating. I think on offense, as I was just saying before the timeout, we still got to pound it inside. Yes, Morgan at six foot five can shoot. That's great but you still want the big man operating in the yep. post most of the time. Then you can look for those inside out opportunities, but it's got to start either dribble drive or post up going towards the hoop. 26-25 bronze medal game. Quebec representative Momorensi Nomads leading the Ontario representative Humber Hawks by one. Going to the line for Humber is going to be Jordan Francis, and he will shoot two. First free throw is good. Ties this game up again. A lot of ties, a lot of lead changes early on Absolutely. here. Second free throw is too strong as we remain deadlocked, and the rebound is corralled by Corojo. Chicago swings it over for Corojo in the high post. Drives up the right hand, knocked away. It'll stay Momo ball. But again, Humber doing a nice job of taking away these driving lanes that Corojo has feasted off of in this tournament so far. They got to be careful, though, reaching in like that. Eventually, you are going to get whistled for the foul. Corojo at the top, reverses the ball, gets it back at the elbow, swings it to the hands of Fortier. Tries the left, pulls up from three, no good. Rebound controlled by Elvis. Gets it into the hands of Martin. Swings it back around a three on the way. That one rims out from Morgan as both teams continue to struggle from the perimeter here. Chicago, he'll run the offense in direct traffic. Swings it for 48, drives, dumps it off. Baseline jumper, too strong. That one off of the hands of Coleman but it stays Momo Ball. Tough break for Humber losing the rebound out of bounds, but they will be happy with that shot. Yes, it was an open jumper from Coleman, but if you have a forward taking those mid-range twos for the Nomads, I think that's exactly what the Hawks like. Ball lobbed into Corozo. Tries the right. Throws it around. Ball fumbled, but kept alive by Momo. Eight on the shot clock now as Chicago tries the left, floats it up, and gets the roll. What a finish. Chicago yeah. doing it all for his team here in the second quarter. He's done, definitely picked up the slack for this squad. Uh, doing it at both ends too, Jamie. Absolutely. Five steals at least already in this game. Nice cut off the ball by Elvis, and he finishes with the right hand. And nice. the Hawks are so much more effective on offense when it starts with a guard driving and then finding the open man after the rotation comes from the Nomads. Fortier reverses the ball, but stepping out of bounds was McFadden Jean. Turnover gives the ball back to Humber. Keita and Cousin back in the game for Momorensi. Kevin Otu into the game for Humber. And it is Mohammed handling the ball, and he will work against Kata. Swings it to Morgan. Morgan dribble handoff back to Mohammed. Tries the left side. Up with the right hand. Too strong. Rebound controlled by Momo. Long leak out pass. And finishing above the rim was Corojo. Perhaps that's what he needed to get himself going. Absolutely. Easy. Good easy look and a great find from Chukagno to see the big man streaking down the floor. Momo back up to high post entry again into the hands of Morgan. Almost loses it. Gets it back. Jumper this time from Martin is no good. Then a great block by Chicago after Martin recovered 
his own miss there. Wants to do it again. Yeah. Chicagno having a sensational first half. And Coach Samson Downey has seen enough. He wants to talk about what they are going to do with Blondeau. Chocagno. I hope we're saying his name know, right because we're know. saying it a lot. I know. And I have a feeling we're going to keep saying it a lot. And it's not always the same. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's one you don't want to get wrong. Well, if the Chicagno family is watching, we apologize. But what a quarter for him. As you said, doing it on both ends. Yeah. The Steels had a big block there. Then he takes it coast to coast. An extremely difficult finish in traffic. We also saw the beautiful assist yep. to Corrosio, hopefully trying to get him going. And the interesting thing from the Hummer perspective is, okay, if you do devote more resources on defense to try to stop Chicagno, what does that open up for the other players yep. who haven't really got going yet for Montmorency? Well, Humber started this quarter with a four-point lead. They now trail by four. Momo going plus eight so far. And they've done a nice job pushing the tempo off of some of these turnovers and turning them into points at the other end. We saw the turnovers in the first quarter, but they didn't necessarily need the points. And this game just has the feel of something that's going to be kind of punch, counterpunch the whole way through. One adjustment's going to be made. The other adjustment will come in. I, I think we're in for a close one throughout the duration of the 40 minutes here. Humber ball trailing by four. It will be Mohammed set to inbound, and he has Martin back there with him, but Momo showing pressure again. Ball lobbed in for Utu, and he will start the offense for Humber. Dribble handoff for Mohammed. Tries to turn the corner, not there, swings it back around to Utu. Bounce pass entry, finds its way to Morgan. Up with the right hand, hits the side of the backboard, the rebound controlled by Corojo. He starts back the other way. Lost the handle, got it back. Swings it into the hands of Kata. Moves it back to Shukegno. Humber staying in the 2-3 zone. Hirojo, baseline jumper, too strong. That's a, probably a look he would that he'll be happy I with. I think he would be happy, absolutely, with that. It was probably only about 10 feet, but yeah, didn't catch iron. Ball kicked out, O2 gets it back, swung around, tipped out of bounds, and it's gonna stay Humber ball as Cy Samuels checks back into the game, and he was effective in his short stint before getting that second foul. I'm interested to see what Cy Samuels can bring here. The ball has been sticking a little bit in the hands of Jalen Morgan, who goes to the bench. Samuels more of a natural passer and a ball mover. I think that could help initiate an offensive surge here for the Hawks. Cascart also back into the game. He had those two threes that gave Humber that lead. Martin now, working one-on-one, -on -one. three on the shot clock, drop step, fade away, tough shot, too strong, but put back and... Should have been offense. Yeah, I think that... Or it should have been, been a rim interference, basket interference, excuse me, but goes unnoticed and we play on. Chukegno draws the foul as he drives in, and he will go to the line. That was an incredibly athletic play from yes. Kaskar to come in there to keep that ball alive temporarily. Guignot trying to add to his totals here on the free throw line. He's got to be getting a little fatigue here because for all the substitutions we've seen in this game, he has not been out of the game that much. Nine minutes in that first quarter. And he played all 40 minutes this morning against Vanier. Wow. So putting his endurance to a test here, but he's obviously been up to the challenge so far. He would argue that that just means he's warm. <laughs> he's in a rhythm, that's for sure. Samuels, big man handling the ball for Humber as he's working against Cousin now. Queen to the corner, three on the way from Mohamed. Got it, big shot there, Humber needed that. And there's that playmaking ability from Samuels distributing, finding the open man. Chukenio now swings the ball into the high post. Driving up with the right hand, that one is good off the hands of Keita. That's Keita filling the role Corojo normally yes. would in the offense, operating from the elbow, and. Filling that niche quite nicely. Samuel sets the screen, gets it back. Drives, kicks it. Another good look from Mohamed. Too short that time. The rebound ripped down by Martin. Gets it to Gaspar. His shot, no good. Wanted the foul. And instead, it's going to go against Humber. And that one's going to go against Mohamed as a noticeably frustrated Daquan Gaspar. Thought he got hit on that jumper. And you know, Humber didn't 
score on that possession, but I think it was a really good offensive possession. The penetration from Samuels forces the rotation, kick out to the open man. Then because the defense is scrambling, that opens up the offensive rebound possibility and the second chance at the basket. Kekegno swings the ball around for Jean. Gets it back, ball got tripped, and Samuel again, now he leaks it out. And Kaskart will reset, back to Samuel, drives, right hand, got it. So him definitely making his presence felt as he gets back into this game. And the two guys that did the damage in the first quarter continue to do it here in the second for Humber. And we'll see how that oh, all defensive pass. breakdown there. And you see Samuels looking, I think, at Jimmy Rich, wondering where he was. That was just a miscommunication. They didn't get their zone set up correctly. The classic high post entry, baseline dive. 2-3 attack, worked to perfection that time from Momo. Samuels now runs the offense. Goes behind his back, showing off the hand. Great handle for a big For man. a big man, absolutely very impressive. For any size man. <laughs> Muhammad has a deep three, has a pretty good look. That one off the back rim and controlled by Shokegno. Another rebound for him. Tries the left side, nothing there. Baseline, now he's double teamed. Kicks it back around, the ball swung. Three ball on the way from Chile is good. Deep from Chile, he's the backup to Forche, fulfills the same role of that shooter, but so far having a little more success than Forche. Elvis comes right back the other way with a bucket. And it'll be Mel Morenzi calling the timeout. So the lead, I'm not sure if it's seven or five. Yeah, I thought after that last basket by Elvis, it might've been up to 35, but we'll see what the scores table Decides here. Humber's yeah, coach is over to talk about. There we go. 40 to 35. Of course, despite the lead, Momo had one timeout remaining. It doesn't roll over to the second half, so they'll take it and set up the final few moments here in the half. Yep. Well, the game certainly has picked up from a tempo standpoint. The 2 3 zone, effective in some ways for Humber, but for the most part, it's, it's been the perimeter shooting for the Humber guards that have kept them in this game. It absolutely has, and we are starting to see a lot more fluidity on offense from Humber, where it's not just hold the ball, take the shot, maybe make one or two passes. They're moving the ball around, they're trying to penetrate, then they're finding the open man, and I think they've been a lot more successful. And for Montmorency, they don't seem too troubled by that 2-3 zone. They, they've been able to get open looks out of it, haven't hit all of them yet, but I think if, if you were to ask the Nomads, they'd be perfectly happy to have Humber stay in that zone for the sure. rest of the game. For sure. Well, Corojo is back into the game for Momo. Chikegno remains in the game with under a minute to play here in this first half. Momo with a five-point lead, and as so many coaches have said, finish these quarters strong is one of the big keys to having success. So we'll see which team gets the edge here in this last minute. Off the flare screen. Designed play out of the timeout. Chile, and they executed it well, just can't hit in three. 10 second differential, but 11 second differential between the shot clock and game clock. Samuels tries to right. Now goes baseline. Tries to kick it around, nobody there. Gets tied up and it will stay. Pardon me, will go back to Momo and they can work for the last shot here with 22.9 seconds left. Kaskart out. And a little surprise leaving Samuels in with those two fouls on a defensive possession, but we'll see here. And it'll be Shokegno handling the ball for Momo, and they will work for the last shot. He's got Corojo on his right. He has Chile on his left. Pardon me, Corojo now in the high post. And just moving his teammates into yeah. position for the play they want to run here. Down to eight seconds. Ball swung. Chile bounce pass baseline. Corojo drives right hand. He's rejected emphatically by Jimmy Rich, who you had alluded to in the first quarter. And what a play yeah, from They might Rich. need to check the air in that ball after that rejection. That was an impressive defensive play up above the rim, absolutely annihilating that shot. Still 1.1 left to see if they try that lob play again for Corozo. Catch, jumper, I don't think he got it off, but it doesn't matter as it doesn't go, so your score at the half, Mount Morenci, 40. They lead the Humber Hawks, 40-35. Thoughts on the first half? Well, it's been extremely competitive, not as fluid as I think either coaching staff would like, although we did see some more success as that half progressed. I think it's going to be a really interesting second half, as it's so often the case, I think it's going to come down 
to halftime adjustments. What I'm watching for Humber is, do they stay in that zone or do they switch back to man-to-man? -man? They were obviously extremely effective in the man-to-man, have lots of stout perimeter defenders to contain the Nomads. I wouldn't be surprised if we see more man-to-man -man for them in that second half. For the Nomads, I think they just got to hit, hit some shots. Yeah. They've had some good looks, haven't gotten that many to fall, but they're doing a lot of good things, and they just need to, as I said, start knocking down their open looks. Bit of a bit of a bend don't break mentality defensively for them as well. They have given up some interior penetration, but all the shots seem pretty contested, and they've done a good job securing the defensive rebounds as well. And the Nomads, to be fair, they got to get someone other than Chicago going. He has 18 for them. That's extremely impressive. Corojo only four. Cousin with six. Forche only one point. He's 0 for 4 from the field. That one only coming from the free throw line, of course. So they got to get some of their other starters involved in the offense in that second half. Well, if you had told Mark Olivier Beauchamp that Corojo would have four points and Fortier would have one and his team would have been in the lead, he might have not believed you, but here we are. And you look at that stat line for Chicago. He's filled it up. Five steals, four assists, six rebounds to go along with those 18 points. He's done everything for this Nomad team. What a performance from him in that half. As we said, he played 40 minutes just this morning, but showing no signs of fatigue whatsoever. He's already played 19 minutes in this game. He's the high man on either team. And just the energy and the athleticism from Chicago and the smarts too, knowing when to turn on the Jets, knowing when to pull the ball back out. It's been extremely effective for Mamarasi. Well, a reverse of the shooting percentages from quarter number one, Momo blistering at 58% in that quarter. Humber shooting just 27%, hence the five-point deficit. But stay with us. We'll be back for second half action of the bronze medal game, Malmorenzi and Humber in just a few moments.
Hi, and welcome back to TFSETV.ca. I'm Paul Carenza here alongside Jamie Dodd, bringing you Championship Saturday here at the Langley Event Center, CCAA Men's National Championships. We have the bronze medal game so far. It has been a back and forth affair with Valmorensi holding a five point advantage. How did they get there? Well, one player, really, Blondo Chigagno, 18 points, six rebounds, four assists, five steals, a tremendous effort on both ends of the floor for him in that first half. Has really been the main reason that his team has the slim five point lead so far in this one. Well, it's quite a stat line for him, seven of 10 from the field. Just three of six in the free throw liner, he could be above 20, but the 18 points go along with five steals in that half. Six rebounds, four assists. He could be flirting with a quadruple double if he keeps this up. Absolutely, and I'm so curious to see how he plays down the stretch in this game. As we mentioned in the first half, he already played a full 40 minutes this morning in an intense battle just to get into this game against Vanier. Now he played 19 of a possible 20 minutes in that half. So a lot of wear on Chigegno so far today and in this tournament. He's an incredible athlete, so if anyone can handle the burden, it's probably him, but that'll be something to watch as this game progresses. Other side of that coin is a man who's had an excellent tournament up to this point, Ely Carojo, but has yet to find his rhythm in this game. What do the Nomads have to do to get him more involved? Well, I think they have to stay patient. They can't force it. If Humber stays in this 2-3 zone that they started running towards the end of the first half, I think that will actually really help Carojo. Like he's, he, he's a very savvy operator in the high post, which of course is one of the traditional ways to attack a zone. So that should open up some opportunities for him. If the Humber switches back to the man defense that they started the game in, I think try to get some looks to Carojo in the post. He's done it most on the perimeter so far, and they've been very effective at preventing him from getting into the lane. So try to just get him the ball close to the hoop and let him go to work from there. On the other side of the court, the Humber Hawks, a very balanced attack, but one guy who caught your eye was Cy Samuels. Absolutely, Cy Samuels, he comes in, you wouldn't think he has the handles that he does, but not only can he dribble, he can also pass, he can score at the rim, he can rebound, does a little bit of everything for the Humber Hawks. He gave them a big boost off the bench in the first half. Well, we are underway here in the third quarter. Humber controls, and it is Morgan at the top running the offense here for the Hawks. Elvis now wanted Morgan to go back door, nothing there, goes back to Muhammad. Muhammad, a dribble handoff for Francis. Francis, five on the shot clock, gonna make something happen. Drives, kicks, three on the way. No good, short. Not a bad look, though, from Cascard, who's already hit two in this game. That's been the recipe on, for success on offense for the Hawks in this game. Drive and kick. Keep doing that, Cascard will hit those open looks eventually. Chukegno now, high post entry for Corojo. Goes high low to the big man, in with the right hand. Got it to go, was Cousin, and that's definitely Something they must have talked about at halftime. That's a very effective play for them, that high-low action with the two post players. Cousin, very soft hands, a big body to guard down low, and he finished for two points there. Back comes Humber, drives, nice bounce pass, but not able to handle it is Jalen Morgan, and perhaps that's some of the fatigue you had mentioned from playing four games in three days. It starts to manifest itself and drop passes and... Mental mistakes they got to like get that. Morgan going, only one of eight in that first half. He's a key piece for them. They really need him to find his groove here. Ball swung around. Now it goes into the hands of Keita. Corojo, tough three, fading away, well short, and it will go out of bounds. And that might be an example of him pressing, yeah. trying to get going on offense. He's had such an impressive offensive performance in this tournament to date. Earlier this morning against Vanier, 25 points, 35 yesterday against Langara. 14 in the opener so you know he wants to start scoring the basketball but that may be not the best shot selection on that possession Mohammed hands it off to Kaskart drives takes a bump and now they're going to get him for the offensive foul and that's going to be his third I believe as he adamantly asks coach Downey to remain in the game and coach Downey obliges Last game of the year. Yeah, if you ever are gonna rely on one of your best players to play smart with three fouls, this is the time to do it. Humber stays in the 2-3 zone. Bounces to the corner for Cousins. Swung back around, a three on the way, short off the hands of Fortier. And the ball rebounded and sent out 
Driving in with the right hand and finishing a very soft finish for Jordan Francis. Great outlet pass from Morgan to Spring Francis and then an impressive finish as well. Defense to offense. Fortier reverses the ball, goes back around to Keita. High post entry for Cousins. Drives, gives it up. Corojo up and finishes. Again, the high-low action this they time. Flip, they flipped yep. the script a little bit there, but the, the, the attention came to Cousin as he was driving the lane. That left Corojo all alone on the baseline. Stepping into a three was Morgan, but that one's too short, and back comes Momo. Corojo again now tries the right side. Good defense there by Humber. Kicks it out. Fortier now tries the baseline, gets a step, kicks it back out to Cousin. Into the corner, Corojo steps back, thought about a three instead. It will be Trekegno, and he knocks it down, continues to be on fire, and that was great ball movement by the Nomads in their biggest lead. They're double figures, up 10 now. That was great defense, too, I thought, yep. by Humber, forcing all that ball rotation. But what can you do when Trekegno just sticks one in your eye like that? Mohamed driving, beautiful bounce pass. Nice finish, and one, and just what Humber needed to stop the bleeding and a beautiful drive and dump off for Elvis who finishes inside. Great response from Humber. Again, that was the first double digit lead of the game for the Nomads and an immediate response. And again, it's their bread and butter letting their skilled quick guards get into the lane and create once they're there. Manya Wemby into the game for Momo, along with number two, McFadden Jean. Three is good from Elvis. And Sai Samuels back into the game. And he will replace Kaskart. Kaskart not happy as he heads to the bench again. You were saying he was desperate to stay in the game. The coach gave him a temporary reprieve, but now yeah. calls him over. Mr. Kegno, tough, great pass inside to find. Banyana Wimby for the layup. Samples beautiful crossover. Spins it around. Back on the left side and a nice finish that time by Morgan. They got to see more of that from Morgan. He's 0-4 from three right now. He's got to put it on the ground and take it to the rack. Tough pass looking for Chicago. Flashing from the top, but overthrew him. Ball goes out of bounds. Back to Humber. And Chicago stayed hot in this game. He hit that big three, then the beautiful pass to Magnani Wembe for the easy two. He's the key to this game right now. Fortier checks out. Shile checks back in. Elvis now handling the ball for the Hawks. Francis pulls up. Got it. So he's starting to heat up a little bit now with two buckets here. And the lead back to five. So just when Momo looked like they were starting to pull away, a response here from the Hawks. Check no three, no good, too short, but a foul called underneath. That was gonna go against the Hawks. Jordan Francis gets called. Cousin back into the game. He replaces Vanya Wimby. I was surprised when they brought Cousin out because he'd had a couple nice connections with Corojo against the zone, but really only a minute on the bench, and he's right back in the game. Corojo jumper, no good, short. Still can't find his range from the middle of that zone. He has had a better quarter here, but ooh, tough pass off the hands of Francis. Goes to Elvis, drives to the right. No good, tapped around and controlled out of bounds. We'll go back to Momorenzi. You see Francis had the quickness advantage matched up with Corojo there, but Corojo's so long and still so athletic for his size that he was able to really challenge that shot and force the miss on the layup. Corojo back out of the game. Chukegno will start the offense. He'll start the right side, gives it to Shealy. Gets it back, comes off the high screen from Portier. Shealy gets it back to the corner. Thought about going inside to Cousins, dead back to Chikegnu. One more pass, Shilek couldn't handle it. Now high post cousin rips and drives up with the right hand, gets the roll. Pretty post move from the big man as the shot clock is winding down. Well, all about footwork from that high post area against the zone. And you had mentioned how long Humber would stay in this 2-3 zone, and they have stayed in it in a while. And as I was saying in the first half, the Nomad's not troubled by it. They're, it's not like you're catching them by surprise or they don't have any experience working against a zone. So 
It's going to be interesting when Humber decides to change things up, if they decide to do so. Yeah. See, they thought about a corner three, not there. Bounce pass, entry to Cousins. Skips it back to Kokegno. Starts with the right hand. Drives up, right hand. Got it. He is dialed in now for the Nomads. And I think the most impressive thing about his game, or one of the most impressive things, I don't think he's forced a shot all game. Often when you have a volume scorer who's racking up the points, they take some bad shots mixed in there. It's been all solid and fundamental for him. Fortier late on the rotation, commits the foul. First team foul, pardon me, second team foul against the Nomads. 16 on the shot clock, just under five to play here. Gautier into the game for Momo along with Carozo back into the game. More quick subs for the Nomads and Chicago is actually gonna get a rest here. A rare rest. And I think maybe just with his nine point cushion, they're saying oh, hopefully we can get him a breather on the bench for as long as possible. Francis now tries to right, pulls up from the free throw line, too strong. Gautier for Carozo. I post entry, Carozo thought about the jumper, puts it in right hand, contested, tough shot, gets his own rebound, takes it back out. And that one knocked away by Samuels, and back comes Humber. Nice pass to find Mohammed. Baseline drive. Risky really pass, pass, risky yeah. pass. Ooh, Samuels not happy about that call, thought he stood his ground. Yeah, I'm not sure about that one. There yeah. was contact, but then Jean just pulled out of it and jumped away from it. I'm not exactly sure what Samuels was supposed to do there, but it will be Jean headed to the line. Well, that's Samuels third. And he will stay in the game for the time being. First free throw from John is good. Martin gets set to check back in. Still 14 minutes in the game, but I'm really curious to see when Humber is gonna kind of change things up here. They're trailing by 10, haven't been able to get into any sort of rhythm here in the second half. They need to find their groove soon. Big offensive rebound, huge possession here for Momo to extend and get their largest lead of the game, leading by 10. Tough pop back three is well off. Samuels the rebound, leaks it out for Francis, and he goes all the way. Too strong on his layup attempt, and it's Corojo back pushing the tempo for Momo, and he'll slow it down to wait. Crossover gets in the middle, kicks it to Jean. He'll try the middle now, up to the right hand, switches to the left, gets it to go, nice Great finish. finish. Great finish from McFadden, Jean. And it was similar plays on both ends. Francis misses the tough layup, then Momo comes right back down, and it's Jean hitting the tough layup, and it's been that kind of night so far for Humber. Tough break here for Jalen Morgan as he got to the bucket and finished, but they say the foul came just before. So we'll negate the basket, and Humber still trails by 12. Fortier checks out, he's had a solid game for uh, Nomads. Morgan operates at the top. Double handoff for Martin. Bounce pass to Samuel. Back to Martin. Right hand, too short. Another good, good look for yeah. Humber, though. Great interior passing, but as you had mentioned, they gotta find a way to get the orange thing in the orange thing. And an offensive foul this time called on Momo. They've been very consistent, the officials, with that call in this game. Absolutely. And in the tournament. And I think Humber's got to avoid frustration because they are getting good looks when they stick to their game and run their offense, but they just got to keep at it and trust that, yes, they will start to fall eventually if we keep getting quality attempts. Elvis working in the backcourt. Tries the left side working against McFadden Jones. Double handoff for Morgan. Wants the screen from Samuels. Tries to turn the corner. Kicks it to the corner. There's a three on the way. Good. Big shot from Francis and Humber needed that lead back to single digits. And it's interesting, again, that's an example of Humber letting their bigs initiate the offense and kicking it to the yeah. guard, and it paid off. Jump for three, too strong, rebound, controlled. Outletted two on one the other way now, they kick it back for Francis. Martin finds the late trailing Morgan, and he thought he was fouled on that three, and so does 
the Humber coaching staff and go back the other way is John for two and boy that's a big five point swing that if he did in fact get hit. Absolutely is and another tough finish through contact at the rim for McFadden John. Samuels kicks it, Elvis now tries the middle. Spinning back to the right hand and foul is Morgan again. So he will go to the line and shoot too. This feels like kind of a contest of who can get going first, Morgan for Humber or Corrojo yep. for Montmorency, both key parts of the offense that just haven't found that consistent rhythm, that consistent success. Morgan struggling from deep, so that time he puts it on the floor, goes to the hoop, and he's rewarded with a trip to the line. First free throw is well short. That's a tough one. Dequan Kaskar getting set to check back in for Humber. They're going to need him down the stretch if they're going to mount a comeback. Second free throw is good. Lead back to 10. Right around where it's been for the last seven or eight minutes. 10 point lead. Malmorenti on top off the strength of Chicago, but some other players, specifically McFadden John, have stepped up and picked up some of these slack on offense. Absolutely, and Chicago back into the game while he was on the bench. McFadden John really carried the load for the Nomads. Oh, nice nice cut from, oh, tough finish, long leak out pass, a beautiful pass, and one as Kuroto gets called for the foul, and Martin with the finish, what a pass. A sensational pass there. Unfortunate for Corojo to, he looked like he might have been able to avoid the contact, but that's the kind of play where you either want to not foul or at least ensure that the foul doesn't also allow the finish. But here it is, Martin with a chance to swing momentum in Humber's favor. Yeah, that's a big play, cut this to seven, and that's Corojo's third foul. And you talked about it in the first half, finishing quarter is so important, now the lead down to seven. Whoever can get the advantage in these final 90 plus seconds is gonna be huge going into the fourth. Pekegno now looks like to slowing the tempo down. Corojo cuts through. High screen from Cousins. Can't turn the corner. Spins back. Good defense from Humber and an offensive foul as they did a really nice job staying in front of Pekegno on that one. Draw the foul. And I think they said they kind of he reached around with his arm to clear space. So as you said, very consistent with those offensive yeah. foul calls, and that time it goes against the Nomads. Momo showing some pressure here, picking up full court, handling the ball is Martin. Tries the right side, and he will get called for the offensive foul. The exact, well not exact, but very similar very play. Very similar play. The off arm there to gain an advantage, and all you can ask as a coach is that your officiating crew is consistent, and they have been that and then some in this game. And now Humber in heavy full court pressure, which we haven't seen consistently from them. I wonder if they'll bring a trap at some point to try to create some turnovers. Just over a minute left here in the third. Momo by seven, trying to extend that lead. Humber trying desperately to get a stop and keep their momentum heading into the fourth. Ball kick, extra pass. Corojo tries middle, kicks it. Here's the three on the way, short. And they do get the stop. I think Forche is feeling those heavy legs after playing a ton of basketball. He can shoot, but he has not found the distance so far. And this one, big three from Francis. Boy, that's huge. That is absolutely huge. All of a sudden, the lead down to four. It looked like the Nomads might be able to put a little distance between themselves and the Hawks, but we're right back to a tight game. A 6-0 run here in the final minute. Three back for Corojo, no good. Four second differential for the shot clock and game clock, and we'll see if Humber works that down as far as they can, leaving Momo with very little time. Ice cream from Samuels, rejected by Martin, loses the handle, Samuels gets it back. Nine on the shot clock. Working, tries, crosses over, he's got some room on the left. Driving, kicks, three ball on the way. No good, but he is fouled and will shoot three. Ooh, tough call, that foul is gonna go against Chicago. And that will be his third, I believe. Oh, pardon Only me, his, his second. second. But I'm sure you can relate. Those are the kind of plays that give coaches oh, gray hair. Nightmare. Late in the quarter, shot clock winding down. Now all of a sudden they can cut it to a one-point game as we're just about to begin the fourth. Boy, they were in complete control with about a minute and 11 left in this quarter. And it's been all Humber in that time. The end one off the miss. Then the corner three. And now the foul on the three with a chance, as you had mentioned, to cut it to 
one point. And Chikegno has played such a strong game, and so much of that is his aggressiveness and his athleticism. But that time it backfired on him, rushing out to close down the shooter and committing the foul. Mollison hits the first two. And he hits all three. Samuels will come out of the game, protecting him with those three fouls. Marceline checks in for the first time since the first quarter when he had those first couple of turnovers against the pressure, I think just to settle things down on defense in the final seconds. Chicago driving, loses the handle, picked up, three on the way, no good. So, wow, what a finish to the quarter for Humber. They uh, go from down 12 to down one, and we have ourselves a game, don't we, Jamie? A back and forth quarter there for sure. Again, as I said, it looked like at times that the Nomads were gonna be able to kind of take control of this game, but no quit from Humber and first it was the outside shooting and then the lucky break on that foul on the three-pointer but they also really locked in on defense for some turnovers and what we've seen I think is the Nomads start to settle for perimeter shooting rather than consistently working the ball inside as they were earlier in that quarter. 58-57, Montmorency still on top here but only by one. Bronze medal on the line, final game of the season for these two teams, second final game overall. Stay with us here on TFSETV. We also will have the gold medal game featuring the home province, VIU Mariners, taking on the Sheridan Bruins from Ontario, and that should be a good one. I'm very excited for that one. Looking at the score sheet here, a couple things jump out. For the Nomads, only three of 18 from the perimeter, 16%, including Christoph Forche, 0 of seven. Eli wow. Corojo, 0 of 3. So two of their top offensive weapons just cannot get it dialed in. They've only combined for seven points in this one. Corojo, 2 of 10 from the field overall. And then a similar story in one regard, at least for the Hawks, Jalen Morgan, 2 of 11, 0 of 5 from three-point range for only seven points. As I was saying, if either Morgan or Corojo can heat up, that is going to give their team a huge advantage in the fourth quarter. Well, the Hawks were looking for a spark offensively, and they got it in the form of a Jordan Francis with a big quarter there, scoring 10 in the quarter, 16 for the game for Francis. And Charles Cousin is having a quietly very effective game for Montmorency. 10 points, 10 rebounds, 5 of 9 from the field. He's so fundamentally sound down there in the post. That's what you want from that five spot. Kegno now tries the right, drives, scoops it over, beautiful pass, but Cousin can't finish inside. Well, just as I give him some shine for being yeah. so dependable, he yeah. misses the bunny <laughs> from Chikegno. The broadcast jinx in full effect Absolutely. here at the Langley Event Center. But he won't get credit for an assist, but it was another dynamic yeah. play from Chikegno there. Chikegno corner, fake three, now to try the middle, kicks it out. Corojo, he wants three, no good, too strong. But Chikegno with another rebound, tries to draw the foul, and Lots it just of out of bounds, yeah. He wanted it, but referees might be thinking about putting their whistles away a bit and letting them settle this one on the court here. This is O2 back in the game. Tries the right side. Oh, very tough. Switches his hands and brings it back to his right. Can't finish, but he will go to the line and shoot two, and he has the chance to give Humber their first lead in a long time. The confidence to even attempt that finish going to the rim at the speed he was going is extremely impressive, and by attempting it, he's earned himself a trip to the line. Yep. She lay back into the game, and he replaces Kuroto. I don't think Beauchamp is happy with that shot. This right now at 58-58 after that free throw is a much lower scoring game than we've seen so far at this tournament in most of the games. And I think that is really a result of, yes, the team's playing good defense, but also those legs and that effort that they've already expended as in this is the fourth of fourth game in three days is starting to come into play. A lot of missed shots from deep for both of these teams. Well, one for two for O2, and with nine minutes to go here in the bronze medal game, we'll Start over again, both teams at 58. Who will have the more effective last nine minutes? Shile kicks it in the corner. Jean now, back to Shile. 
up with the right hand, got it. Wasn't sure what he wanted to do off the catch, but was able to flip it in with the right hand. And yeah. Morenci with the lead and showing pressure again, which was effective for them in the first half. O2 now gives it up. The ball pass, and that, sorry, that was uh, Cascart trying to go back to O2, and that ball was knocked out of bounds, so turnover for Humber. And they will show pressure here. Risky showing pressure on Chicago because if he does, and you see now that Mollison will back off a little bit, because if he does get past you, you know he's going full steam to the hoop. High speed from Chile. Mollison goes under, up with the right hand, no good, but he is fouled and will go to the line and shoot two. Mollison's first. First free throw is good, lead back up to three. So as soon as Humber ties it up, Momo with a little pushback here, small pushback, go back up by three. As I was saying in the first half, I expect this to be close down to the wire, barring something incredible happening. These are two very evenly matched competitive teams. Morgan now tries the left hand, no good, but he is fouled and will go to the line and shoot two. That one will be on Charles Cousin. Bit of a tough call against Momo there, but you gotta give Morgan credit for being aggressive, using his physicality, getting to the rim, or trying to get to the rim, and drawing the foul in the process. Charlie Mo in, Cousin out. First free throw, good. What's the order of business here for these two teams? I mean, you know that Momo wants to keep the ball in Chicago's hands and try to make some plays. So they're going to need someone else to step up, you would think, and score. And I think at this point in the season, you've got to rely on what's been successful for you all year. And for the Nomads, that's Corojo, who's on the bench right now, as well as the outside shooting of Forche and the drive and slash ability of McFadden Jean. So you're not going to reinvent the wheel at this stage of the season. you just got to hope that there's enough left in the tank for your key players that they can find their rhythm down the stretch. Chicago lost the ball, but out off Humber. Nine on the shot clock, they'll get it back. Pass to Chile, three corner, got it. Nice job by Chicago to look off the D there and get Chile enough time to hit that three and they're back up five and here, splitting the double team and going all the way in. Beautiful pass. Great response. Set up from Mollison. Chile's normally the backup for Forte. They're both on the court together right now. Chile's been more effective from downtown, so I wouldn't be surprised to see him play a lot of minutes here. Gets it back, tries the left now. Pulls up, long two, strong. Rebound into the hands of Cascard. That kind of shooting might get him a spot back on the yep. bench, though. Wilson driving in, nice dish. Up strong, no good, second attempt. This time it does go from Morgan. Morgan might have got away with a push, yeah. grabbing the rebound there, but referees let it go. Back up, back down to a one point lead here as Corojo gets set to check back in for the Nomads. Fortier with it, kicks it in the corner for Zahn, tries the middle, a lot of room, up with the right hand, no good, but he is called for the offensive foul. Boy, yeah. that, that one was close. That's Cascard who drew the charge and that's a great job bailing out his teammate because Marceline got burned on the closeout. He yeah. was too aggressive. Jean loves to go to the rim, put the ball immediately on the floor, and Cathcart did a great job to rotate, get his feet set. Kata back into the game. Both Fortier and Chile out now. Samuels back into the game for Humber. Again, Momo showing pressure. Marceline gets it, he will try the left side, gets the sideline, he's got some room to operate now. He'll reset. High screen coming from Samuel. Rejects it, drives right, all the way in, kicks it, Kaskar, good look at a three. No good, too short. But rebound controlled by Humber. I thought that one was going in, perfect yeah. line, just came up a little short, but it was Ooh. a great look for Marceline, who now is struggling to control the ball. Defense. All over the place, That's what a block from yeah. McFadden, John just deflecting that high arcing three. And that ball tipped out of bounds, goes back to Momo. 
Elvis come checks into the game here for Humber. Replaces Marshline, who had the ill-advised behind the back attempt. And you saw the athleticism of the Nomads on display in that possession. It looked like their defense was totally disorganized, running around everywhere. But because they are so athletic, John able to recover and still deflect the shot. Hiroshi for Kakegno. Cousin has it now. Wanted to hand off. I think he thought that Corojo might have been going back door on that one and lost the handle. So another miscommunication leads to another turnover here. Six minutes left, a one-point game. These possessions are very valuable. Those little mistakes, we saw a very similar play on the other end from Humber. You're so tired, you've played so much basketball. The physical fatigue, the mental fatigue, whichever team can maintain that poise down the stretch is going to be big. Samuels now working against Cousin. Swings it around to Kaskar. Might have gotten away with a push off up strong. Gets the roll working against Chicago. So, and Kaskar flexes the muscles yep. after them. That was two extremely strong physical players going to war in the paint. Oh, and a no call on that one. As Chicago tried to answer yep. right back, going it, taking it right at Kaskar. Kaskar looking for the offensive foul. Elvis inside gets it to go. And Humber all of a sudden now lead by three, their biggest lead since the first quarter. And it's the guard play from Kaskart and Elvis. That's the bread and butter of this team, relying on the playmaking, the shooting, the finishing from players like that. That's what's gotten them back in front in this game. An interesting choice by the Humber coaching staff. They're huddling up by themselves, letting the players talk about it. Sometimes when your players are in a rhythm, you don't want to say anything to them, right? Yeah. You just want to let them stick with what they're doing. Well, Momo led by as many as 12 points in that third quarter. And Humber has come all the way back, not just to tie this game, but now take a three-point lead. Defense has really stepped up for the Humber Hawks. They seem to have an answer for every dribble penetration that Momo has in that fourth quarter. But uh, if they're going to hold on to this lead, they're going to need to make sure that they A, stay out of foul trouble, and B, uh, keep converting on these transition opportunities. And we're seeing, especially in this fourth quarter, the referees are letting this be physical. You know, some players don't like that. Some players really embrace it. So if you are the kind of player that likes to mix it up down low, this is your type of game right now in the final five and a half minutes. Sixty-seven, sixty-four, five and a half to go here in the bronze medal game. Humber Hawks of Ontario leading the Momorensi Nomads of Quebec. Trukegno, who's been so good, but has gotten a little quiet here in this fourth. And he has talked about fatigue and another miscommunication on a dribble handoff play that leads to a pass out of bounds and the frustration on the faces of these Nomads players is again a turnover that really didn't need to happen. And especially coming out of a timeout when you're trying to stop that momentum and you just cough it up right back down the other end of the floor. That's tough for the team to absorb. Elvis, high post entry to Samuels. Ooh, gives it back to him. Nice job rejecting that handoff. There's a corner jumper. Got it. The three is good. What a time for Jalen yeah. Morgan to get going. His first triple of the night. It came off the extra pass and some great ball movement. Okay, no ball rotated. Corojo, he wants three. No good. Rims out. Just cannot find the range. That's a good look for him. Samuels now. Pass for Elvis. Montmorency's got to lock in on defense here. All the momentum going Humber's way. They need to stop. 13 on the shot clock, and Elvis will reset, working against Corozo. Crosses over with the left hand, right to the bucket, and the blow by for two. Eight point lead as Humber has turned it on here in the fourth. Cousin is on the bench for no Momo, so they knew they didn't have any rim protection. Beautiful behind the back pass layup. Timeout called. What a bucket for the Humber Hawks, and they have completely taken over this game again. Another turnover that leads to two the other way, and we talk about fatigue. Boy, Humber Hawks not showing signs of it now, are they? No, and when you go on a run like this, all of a sudden that adrenaline kicks in and you feel fresh, just like you haven't played in three days, right? And you saw the energy they had going to the bench. They are fired up. That makes it all the easier to come back and lock in on defense, force those turnovers. Whereas for the Nomads, we're starting to see that body language sag a little bit. Only four and a half minutes left of their season being over, and they have such a tall task in front of them. It's going to be a really tough task for their coaching staff to get them to refocus, settle down, and stick to the game plan. Well, you talked about 
punch, counter punch, and that has certainly been the case in this game. Momo going up big, and now Humber completely taking over this game and going up 10 themselves. If Momorenzi is going to have one last push, it's going to have to come from, as you mentioned, Eli Carojo and more from Chicago. But so far in this fourth quarter, both of those two have been completely held in check. And I mentioned a star on each team who was really struggling on offense, Jalen Morgan for the Hawks and Corojo for the Nomads. You saw Jalen Morgan hit the big corner three yeah. just moments ago. Corojo tried to answer with a three of his own, but missed. That could be the story of this game. For if sure. Morgan just has that little bit of extra oomph that pushes his team over the top. Well, it is Jean Fortier, cousin Corojo and Chocagno from Montmorency. It is Elvis, Otu, Samuels, Francis, and Jalen Morgan for Humber. Just over four to play. Momo trailing by 10. John swings it back around to Chicago. Drive up right hand. Got it. They needed that. Huge bucket by the guy who's carried them all day. Yeah. Samuels now working against Cousin on the perimeter. Passes to Elvis, thought about a baseline jumper, now puts it on the deck, swings it back around, and now gets it back in the corner. Again, thought about a three, not there. Tries the right side, running out of room. And he goes up and will get to the free throw line, and boy, Gautier was not, uh, or pardon me, Courtier was not happy with that call. I think the referee might have given an informal warning on the technical foul to Fortier there, as he was fired up, saying it was an offensive foul. Big free throws coming here for Humber. Trying to get their lead back to double figures. First one, no good. Elvis a little strong. Line drive free throw trajectory from Elvis on that one. Three forty-six to play here in the bronze medal game. Humber control now leading by nine. Unorthodox free throw from Elvis. Absolutely. <laughs> Chicago, who has been so good today, starts the offense on the right side, swings it back to Jean. Around for Fortier. Bounce pass for Corojo. Runs out of room on the baseline. Diagonal skip into the corner. Jean for three. No good. Missed by a lot on that one. And back comes Humber. And Humber playing more of that traditional man-to-man -man defense yep. and an extremely effective defensive possession right there for them. Elvis works against Chicago. Behind his back, tries the left, nothing there. Bounce pass to Samuel. Ten on the shot clock. He works against Cousins. Drives, right hand, beautiful finish. What touch by the big man. He's it's such an effective player. He can do so many little things right. The scoop layup there from the big fella. Huge bucket down the stretch. 14 for three. Got it. Big shot. Needed that. And he can get going in a hurry. Absolutely. Finally, Christoph Forche joins the party here with his first three-pointer of the night. Giving a little bit of life back to his team. And is this a timeout? This Humber timeout, maybe even just a cool off Fortier? Maybe, and also I think just a rest for the crunch time lineup sure. here. Yeah, yeah, they're leading by eight, but you saw they almost threw the ball away on the inbounds after that. And there might just be a chance to settle the nerves a little bit and refocus on some of the things they want to emphasize down the stretch. Well, eight points lead is formidable with this much time left, but certainly not comfortable in a bronze medal game. So certainly sure not insurmountable. Coach Downey would love to see his team extend this out of this timeout. And if you are Coach Beauchamp, what are you telling your team right now? Well, it all starts on defense. You gotta be locked in on that end. That means rotating to defend the dribble penetration, but then the second rotation just as important when the kick out comes. You can't give up those open three pointers because Humber has started to heat up a little bit from downtown. And on the offensive end, execution, avoid turnovers. You cannot cough the ball up and let Humber run out in transition where they've been extremely effective. You have to take care of the basketball. There's a temptation to hurry when you're trailing like this in the final three minutes. Yes, if you can get a quick, easy basket, obviously take it. But more important is execute, keep control of the basketball, stay patient, work for a good shot. 2.52 to play, we are under three to go. 
Humber ball. They lead by eight in Montmorency. Not surprising here, showing pressure. Ball inbounded to Francis. Gives and there's the trap and trying to speed the game up, force a turnover. Baseline drive, Samuels gets it. He will reset, 12 on the shot clock. Long two, tough shot. Maybe not the shot that Humber yeah. wanted on that possession. Still with eight on the shot clock. You're very happy about that if you're the Nomads. John, big corner three, no good, just rims out. Boy, they needed that. That would have been huge. This would have been a tight game if they had hit that one. Back the other way comes Morgan. He will slow down and give it to Elvis. Working against John. Bounce pass for Morgan. Tries the right against Corojo. Right hand, got it. Tough. What a finish. Right hand finish over Corojo. Corojo defending him, cousin helping as well. And the big man, obviously no fear for Jalen Morgan. Ooh. What a block by Cy Samuels. Samuels. Making his presence felt, my goodness. Wow, two minutes to go. Looked like Chicago might have had a layup there, but Samuels comes over and denies him. 70 on the shot clock, Corojo at the top. Tries the right side again, runs out of room. Chicago swings it, Fortier. He'll try a very deep three, got it. As you said, he can heat up. Well, that's a big one, cuts it to seven. He's keeping him in this right now. If you're Humber, you cannot lose him. Samuels now, he will slow it down. Drives right hand, no good, too strong. Rebound tapped around. Big miss. Fortier gets it, thought about the three, drives instead, throws it up. And an offensive foul with a rare offensive foul on the base. I don't see that one a lot. And I think that's going to be Fortier's fifth. Well, that is just the worst possible timing. And you know, he got the lead pass beyond the arc. It was just a little out of his reach. If it had been on the money, I'm pretty sure he was going to stop and pop from three. Instead, he drives baseline and ends up taking the charge. That's a huge swing right there. You could be looking at either the three to drop it to a five-point game, but now he's out of the game, one of your most dangerous shooters. Just when he started to get going. Here's the turnover, though, on the press. Huge. Corojo in. He finishes. Lead is five now. Minute and a half to go. Montmorency continues to pressure. That swarming Morgan defense around the floor. Loses control, but manages to keep it. Gets it around to Samuels. And him, always calm and collected, it seems. Little jumper, no good. Gets the rebound, puts it back. That one doesn't go. Second chance. That one is tapped around. Third attempt on an offensive rebound. The referees Cousin have swallowed their whistles. Wow. So much contact on every play here. The Humber coach can't believe it, but it's Jean. Oh. And he turns that one over, going one on three. Samuels back the other way. Cannot get to go. Wow. Well, Samuels is uh, padding his rebounding stats anyways, that's for sure. That's an ill-advised three, but they get the offensive rebound. Neither team breaking out the textbook clock management here in the last minute of this game. I don't think you're gonna be seeing any of these highlights on the how to play in the last minute of a game video, but foul finally called in that. Well, that was a frantic 30 seconds or so right yeah. there. Humber might have had eight shot attempts in that 15 second span. And you're right, the three pointer, I. If the coach hadn't been so fired up about the refereeing, he certainly would have gotten fired up about yeah. that, as you said, ill-advised three-point shot. First free throw is good. Lead up to six. Big one here to make it a three-possession game. And he does just that. Coach Beauchamp will take a timeout with 38 seconds left. He's going to need to figure out a way to get some looks from the perimeter and as you had mentioned earlier, speed up the number of possessions in this game. And you know they had that opportunity, cut it to five. It was Jean who was able to pick up the basketball but he was so out of control going the other way that he turned it right back over and that led to another frantic sequence at the Humber end of the court and it's just those little plays, those turnovers, that misstep that could end up costing your team the game here. Still not out of it, yes. No. It's a pretty big margin to make up in this amount of time, but if you force a turnover, if you hit a three, all of a sudden you're right back in it. Well, that's the key, right, that Momo's gonna need to score quickly, probably a three. I mean, at this point, you take whatever you can get as long as it's quick, and then it's about setting up that pressure that has been effective, 
and keep putting pressure on those Humber ball handlers. And I wouldn't be surprised still with about you know, whatever it is, 30, 35, 36 seconds left if they don't foul and see if they can't get Humber to dribble themselves into a trapping situation expecting to be fouled. I think they definitely will bring the heavy trap first looking for that that turnover early in yeah. the possession. Well, here we go, 81-74, seven point game. Humber leads Momorensi. Momorensi to inbound. And again, the top three pointing, three point shooting threat for the Nomads on the bench with five fouls. Yeah. Pass swung around and it's Shikegno tries the right. Beautiful pass inside and fouled and going down hard is Cousin and he will go to the line and shoot two points. A risky play to contest that one. If he hits that and goes in one, that's the worst scenario you Absolutely. have. Absolutely. This you is said, not much better to score with the clock stop. As you said, it has to be quick, and that was perfect from Chicago. Yeah. Again, managing the game as he's re done really well tonight. Not settling for the free driving and finding the open man. Samuel back into the game for the defense offense sub. She lay back into the game, or will be back into the game for the shooter. And it's interesting to see defense offense where the big man comes in for offense and the, the yep. guard goes off and he'll come back in for defense. But with Samuel's passing ability on the offensive end, he makes a big difference. Cousin hits the first free throw and Chile will go in to assume will be part of that pressing lineup for Momorenci as they go small. Second free throw is good. Sub into the game. Humber to set up their press break. And interestingly, Humber still has two timeouts left here if they need to use them, but they might resist doing so because they don't want to let Montmorency huddle up again here trying to make up this deficit. Or at this point in the game, cutting your shot clock to 14 if they advance the ball. This is, this is exactly why that rule was put into play to force coaches to make a decision here. And, and uh, Coach Downey has decided he'd rather have the 24 seconds. That's a great point. Heavy pressure as we expected. Good able to job break to bust it. it. Samuels and he will be fouled. And that will send him to the line. Five point game, these are big free throws here. Samuel has been so reliable in this game from the get go, started strong, had to sit with fouls, but has made his presence felt and his calming influence has been a big part of his team. Well, as you Six said, seven. the broadcaster's curse. Here it comes. <laughs> he will for sure make this one. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Second free throw, no good. Back comes Momo. Chile, good look at three. This is a big one. Oh, rims out. Rebound control. Momo by has Humber. had a few that have just rimmed out in this fourth yep. quarter. They got to be shaking their heads. Francis gets fouled, and he will go to the line. So five points, 15 seconds left. Almost at the point where we can say this is a formality, but stranger things have happened. Well, that was exactly the opportunity Momo needed. They got two missed free throws, a good look at a three, just rims out. That's that's just how it goes sometimes. Crowd starting to file in and fill the seats here at the Langley Event Center in anticipation of the gold medal game featuring the VIU Mariners from Nanaimo taking on the Sheridan Bruins from Ontario. Second free throw is good. Utu into the game for Humber, and that's see if uh, Montmorency chooses to foul, if they get a make here, if they just let this one end. Two big free throws from Francis yeah. there to possibly put this one away. Good take, no pull up three, no good. Rebound ripped and controlled by Utu, and he is fouled. Fantastic rebound by yeah. Utu yeah. as well. Only listed at six foot, but he got up Sky above the rim there. To get that rebound. And Humber can sense it now. Yeah. Well, Montmorency controlled much of this game, but uh, just that one push early in the fourth quarter here that Humber had and stretched that lead to 10. And since then, they've been able to fend off any charge from the Nomads. First free throw from Utu. No good. We 
we should see a good crowd on hand for the gold medal game as the host team or the host province teams often draw well. Second free throw for Utu is good, so that should do it. Momorenzi will have one last crack here, but Chukagnu won't bother. Your final score, Humber Hawks 84, Momorenzi Nomads 76, and Humber are your CCAA bronze medalists for 2019. Boy, they didn't make it easy, but they got it done. Well, it was a fantastic performance from both teams. We talked about it all game, but the challenge of getting up for this after you've already played a hard-fought battle this morning to just get into this bronze medal game is so difficult. And they didn't leave anything on the floor. This was a physical, intense sure. battle. The referees let them play pretty much all game, and especially in that fourth quarter. It was just the outside shooting ultimately that let the Nomads down. We'll wait to see what the final tally was from three-point range here. And for them, it was six of 26, only 23%. Forche, two of nine, Corrojo, O oh of four, uh, McFadden, Jean McFadden, McFadden, Jean, excuse me, <laughs> O oh of four. So that's a lot of your key players who weren't able to find their rhythm from beyond the arc. And if just a couple of those go down earlier in the game, all of a sudden, you're looking at a completely different contest in the fourth quarter. Well, Shokegno, who was so strong, still finished <laughs> with flirting with that triple double. 26 points, nine rebounds, eight assists, but it wasn't enough as uh, the Humber Hawks balanced attack led by Jordan Francis, but key performances, especially Jalen Morgan, as you mentioned down the stretch, Kerwin Elvis in that key point where they cut back into that lead. And uh, Humber Hawks are your bronze medalists as we get set for the bronze medal presentation or the player of the game presentation. Stay with us here on TFS ETV, the gold medal game coming up, a BIU Sheridan. The, right, the rest of the season before this, simply a formality. These two teams will duke it out for college supremacy in Canada in just a few moments.